morning and welcome to Worship with East Toronto Citadel. We're glad that you've joined us here this morning. Uh, once again, we're back virtual this week, uh, hopefully just for this week. Uh, many of you will know from my email this week, uh, this past Monday, we, of course, received a large dump of snow, which, again, wasn't the problem. It, it's The problem is the snow gathered up on the side of the streets, which have, has made it impossible for cars to park, which weren't, weren't already parked there overnight. Uh, and so there's very limited spaces. And so just to, to keep everyone safe and trying to figure out where to park, uh, we're just going to take this week hop back in line and what greater uh, joy is it to be able to worship in our pajamas maybe some of you are still in your pajamas and some are uh, resting comfortably with a cup of coffee what a great way also to continue to to be able to worship in that way uh, just for this week at least um, as many of you will know uh, I also get uh, sent out an email on Friday night uh, letting everyone know of Doris and uh, her unfortunate uh, diagnosis that unfortunately it looks like she's going to be uh, in her last days. And so I'm, I pray that you keep Bev and the family in your prayers as they uh, as they journey through these coming days and uh, give and pray that uh, the Lord will give uh, Doris uh, peace in her, uh, in her and rest in her final days. Uh, just continue to keep them in your prayers. But with all that, we do come here for no other reason than to worship uh, our God and our Savior. And so I'm going to begin this morning with a call to, call to worship. It reads, This is the time when God's people gather together. This is the time when we wait to hear God's word. This is the time for God to continue his work in us. This is the time when we remember that God makes us family. This is the time when we give thanks for all that is good. This is the time to worship our God. And this morning we are pleased to have Laura uh, giving the word to us this morning. Uh, funny enough, funny, unfunny, Laura was really looking forward to preaching from the pulpit and in person. She was the last person to give the word when we were uh, virtual back in October. Uh, I hadn't remembered that until I went to go put the service together and I noticed that the last one that I put together had Laura giving the message. She would have loved to have been with us giving us the word in person, but I guarantee you she will give us a word in person soon. But I'm going to begin our, our, our service this morning with a scripture. It is from James chapter 5 verses 7 through 11. It says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, be an ex as an example of patience in the face of suffering. Take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Let's join together in worship and in song.
on a deep dive into the fruit of the Spirit, that list of characteristics that Paul gave to the church in Galatia, which describes someone walking in step with the Spirit. As Stefan reminded us of in the first week of this series, a branch will not produce fruit if it is not connected to the vine or the tree. If I cut a branch off of an apple tree, for example, it will no longer grow apples. Similarly, our lives will not produce good spiritual fruit if we are not intimately connected to God through the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. I was talking to someone just this past week about Theodore Roosevelt's famous quote that comparison is the thief of joy. I mused that we could actually use the presence or absence of joy in our lives and the other fruit of the Spirit as a bit of a litmus test to see how healthy our relationship with God is. See this fruit, these characteristics should naturally flow from us if our relationship with God is strong. If we are lacking in them, then perhaps we have inadvertently drifted away from God for one reason or another. Because of this, an exploration of the fruit of the Spirit is a wonderful way of starting off the year by ensuring we are firmly rooted in our relationship with God. 
Stefan has already walked us through the first three fruit of the spirit that Paul includes on his list. The first is love, which Stefan reminded us must be unconditional. As we see the image of God in those around us, in everyone around us, we are called to love them as God first loved us. The second on Paul's list is joy, a characteristic that, despite common belief, is not the same as happiness. In fact, joy is not based on present circumstances, but is based on an understanding of our salvation and is deep, meaningful, and resonant over time. The third, which Stefan taught on last week, is peace. That sense of completeness that is expressed in Hebrew as shalom. When we say, it is well with my soul and it is well with my community, this is peace. Today we come to the fourth listed fruit of the Spirit, which is patience. And I think we've all had to have a lot of patience this past week with the snow and shifting back to online church. And so I think it's very fitting that we get to talk about patience today. In patience, we shift from these somewhat abstract qualities of our soul, love, joy, peace, and begin to focus more on what it is like to live within our places of work, our homes, or when we gather with friends. The word Paul used in his letter to the Galatians for patience really means long-tempered. It's been translated into various English words, including long-suffering and forbearance. Today, most English translations of the Bible will use the word patience as we will today. But even this doesn't quite capture what Paul is trying to say in his letter to the Galatians. There simply isn't a word in English that properly and fully describes that which Paul is talking about here. Perhaps because most English speaking cultures over time have valued quick fixes, immediate action, and capable bodies and minds, rather than those people and circumstances which truly require long suffering and forbearance. Patience really has two meanings here. The first is the ability to endure opposition and personal suffering for long periods of time without complaint. And the second is the ability to put up with the shortcomings and foibles of others, including other believers. But before we look at patience as a quality that should show in our own lives, let's first think about patience as a quality of God. The very first description that God gives of himself, found in Exodus chapter 34, verse 6, is when he speaks to Moses and says this of himself. He says, The Lord, the compassionate, and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. And while we don't see the word patience actually used here, I think this could very well be a definition of patience, being slow to anger, abounding in love, and being gracious, showing that unmerited favor to others. Really, when you look at the overarching story of the Old Testament, we see a God who is patient generation after generation with the Israelite people who repeatedly turned away from God and oppressed the weak amongst themselves, acting not in the way that God had called them to. Even after creating idols, following evil rulers and turning their backs on justice, God continues to love the Israelites, to forgive them, really to show incredible patience and forbearance with them, even though it is interspersed with necessary acts of judgment. The New Testament goes on to describe to us the incredible patience of Jesus. He not only shows profound patience with the disciples when they continually misunderstand him or lack faith, even after witnessing incredible miracles, but he also shows incredible amounts of patience and long suffering when he endures the ridicule and cruelty of the cross. And so this patience that is demonstrated for us in the history of the Old Testament and the life and legacy of Jesus ought to serve as an example for the type of patience that we should have in our own lives. As we seek to demonstrate this Christ-like patience in our lives, the Holy Spirit helping us. I believe that there are three areas where we should strive to be patient. 
First, we should show patience with God. The Bible repeatedly reminds us that we will experience times of trial and of suffering, whether it is persecution for our faith or just the hardships of living in a world that is still rife with sin. Christians are not immune to enduring hardships of all kinds. It is in these times when we may, like the psalmists, cry out to God and pray these circumstances may come to an end. There's really nothing wrong with praying for an end to the pandemic, for example, or for rain during a dry spell, or freedom for those experiencing sexual slavery or religious persecution. However, we should be prepared to endure long suffering with an attitude that is like Jesus, who even on the cross did not respond in anger or frustration. While God may not respond to our prayers the way that we want or in the timing that we would prefer, we can look to Psalm 33 verse 20 to 22 for guidance, which says that we wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in his holy name. May your unfailing love be with us, Lord, even as we put our hope in you. And so it is because of hope and trust in God that we are able to wait on God and show patience. We must learn to wait on the Lord for his perfect timing and his perfect plans. Second, we ought to show patience with each other. I'm almost always moving in fast forward. My mind and my body are quick. And I find I often get ahead of myself and those around me. And this can get me into trouble in the patience department more often than I'd like to admit. There's an aspect of patience that is literally slowing yourself to the pace of another. I want to say that again because I think it's a great definition of patience. Slowing yourself to the pace of another. And this is something that motherhood has taught me well. In this respect, Patience can be slowing yourself to walk alongside an infant who is just learning or cycling beside a child who is learning to ride a two-wheeler. Things I've become well acquainted with over the past several years raising Vanessa and Sean. It can take twice as long for me to bike around the block with them or to navigate the grocery store when I have my kids in tow. And yes, it takes patience sometimes. Similarly, patience can be holding your tongue to allow someone to finish their sentence or find the right words to articulate their thoughts rather than finishing that sentence for them. This is a big one between me and Sean at times as he's still finding his words and learning vocabulary and um, figuring out how to express himself. Sometimes I'd love to just finish that sentence for him and get the thought out because I know where he's going. But in love, I need to allow him to get his own thoughts out and finish his own sentences. Each of these acts of patience demonstrate our love for those around us and are an example of the Holy Spirit producing good fruit in us. I was listening to a podcast interview between Brene Brown and Auschwitz survivor Dr. Edith Eger some time ago, and I was really struck by something that Dr. Eger shared. A beautiful soul who lost her parents to the gas chambers of the Holocaust and a true example of the beauty of long suffering with an attitude of joy and peace. Dr. Egger articulated that love is a four letter word spelled T-I-M-E. Isn't that a great quote? Love is a four letter word spelled T-I-M-E, time. Because it takes time to nurture a marriage to be patient with your spouse. It takes time to listen to your child tell you the same thing for the 10th time without cutting them off. It takes time to patiently sit and listen to the stories of the marginalized and the oppressed without jumping to conclusions. Time is finite and because of this, it is valuable. And we can offer to share it in love with those around us each and every day. Yes, there will be times when showing patience to those around us will be easier than others. Patience doesn't only mean taking our time in love with those around us. Recall the word that Paul uses for patience here also means forbearance. In his book, Cultivating the Fruit of the Spirit, Christopher Wright shares that patience with others means 
putting up with the things other people do or don't do that you wish they would. It means that you make the effort to bear with other people, even when they irritate or annoy you. Forbearance is when you choose to forgive people rather than hold a grudge. Forbearance is when you choose to overlook something that was hurtful or unkind, rather than fighting back with harsh words or making sure that you get even. Forbearance is even when you learn to be patient with others, mainly because you are very well aware of your own shortcomings and weaknesses. It means you remember that other people are probably also having to be forbearing with you. And I love that list of reminders that Christopher Wright gives. All of these examples of forbearance, of bearing with those around us in so many different circumstances and remembering that they also have to bear with us. There's a cheeky saying that goes something like this, to dwell in love with saints above Ah, that will be glory. But to dwell below with saints we know, ha, that's another story. Which leads me to the final area of our lives in which we ought to show patience. And that is showing patience with ourselves. It was just this past week that I read an article on a recent law that was passed in Canada. Two well-known American biblical speakers, Franklin Graham and John MacArthur, had publicized their opinions of this new Canadian legislation and made some very strong statements about how Canadian pastors were responding. Without going into detail, I can tell you that I did not and still do not agree with the blanket statements that they made about me as one of those, quote, Canadian pastors. And I was livid that such sentiments had been articulated while I probably should have responded with forbearance, bearing with the saints below, my knee-jerk response was to forward an article, the article to Stefan with some snarky and sarcastic commentary of my own. It was only after I had given myself some time to calm down that I saw the error of my ways. Do I agree with what these two Christian celebrities said to the press? No, I don't. But I shouldn't have responded the way that I did. I should have responded in a more Christ-like way, with patience. Even as we seek to walk in step with the Spirit and cultivate Christ-likeness in our lives, there will be times when our own patience falls short. It is, it is in these moments when we can repent of our shortcomings, show ourselves the grace and patience that God so richly bestows on us, and seek to do better next time. Lieutenant Colonel Brenda Critch, who I look to as a spiritual mentor, speaks often of the spiritual discipline of starting again or starting over. If we have prayed for patience and have committed or have committed rather to any other spiritual practice and find that we falter in our resolution, she reminds of the discipline of starting over, starting anew and trying again. While this shouldn't be a crutch to not putting in an effort, it is a good reminder that holy perfection will not be attained this side of heaven. And so we ought to be patient with ourselves on the journey. This fruit of the spirit, patience, of slowing your pace to that of another, of being willing to endure long suffering, of forbearing with one another in spite of our faults. It's a high call, really, and I don't think we can do it without the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. And I think that's the point. We need the Holy Spirit in order for this fruit to grow in our lives. But what a wonderful call it is, isn't it? To be patient with God, to be patient with each other, and yes, even to be patient with ourselves and not be too hard on ourselves when we mess up. And isn't it wonderful that we have an example of such wonderful patience, the God we see in the Old Testament and Jesus God incarnate in his earthly time of ministry. This is the type of patience that we can and should strive for in our lives. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And we are thankful 
that when we invite you in, you come and live not only amongst us, but in us. We would ask just now that your Holy Spirit, God, would come and fill us anew, touch our hearts in a way that will inspire us, challenge us, and equip us to be patient, not only with you, God, but with those around us, and yes, even with ourselves. Thank you for showing us such wonderful examples of your own patience. Thank you for being so patient with us for the many times that we mess up, for the many times that we will mess up again. Thank you for showing grace and love in spite of our faults. God, may we show that patience, that love and grace and kindness to those around us, looking to you as our example. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now we are going to sing a song that really sings the words that God spoke of himself in Exodus. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, rich in love. As we sing the words of this song, may you give thanks to God for his great patience with us. And may you pray that you would be able to show patience to those around us. and compassionate
Thank you for worshiping with us here at East Toronto this morning. I pray that you've been blessed by the words and thank you to Laura for challenging us as uh, the word was spoken through her to be patient with each other and patient as we wait upon the Lord. I want to leave you with this benediction here this morning. It says, go out from here and live lives worthy of the one calling which we all share in humility gentleness and patience, speak only what is true and loving, and so grow into the unity that is ours in Christ. And may God the Creator reshape your hearts. May Christ Jesus, the bread of life, sustain you always, and may the Holy Spirit unite you in the bond of peace. May we go from here in love, joy, 
peace, and patience. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you this week. Thank you.